All right, welcome back to Black Lodge Trivia Night. This is Art running through the book quests in Lord of the Rings Online. Last time we got to Orkel, I think is how it's pronounced. We are in Book 13, Chapter 2. Chapter 1 might have been in Rivendell or something, sending us up here. And uh, yeah, now we're here to chase after the other half of a ring that... Um, I can't remember the name, but uh, Sarah Oakhart, who she became, uh, was after a ring, a ring of power, I assume. And um, the elf that was helping us, Lairdin, uh, whose daughter was taken by darkness, believed the ring could, uh, could save his daughter. So understandably, he's on a mission to do that. Um, and I guess, I don't know if we're going to help him. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but... Right now we need to talk to Dathi, is a, a Kaupa Kota in the land of Forakel, north of Evan Dimmy's right there behind us. Lairdin has asked you to go to Forakel and speak with the dwarf trader Dathi. It may be, the, may be that the dwarf will know where to begin his search for Naquil. By my father, this is a sad day. Oh there, you say you come from Laird and the Elf? Aye, uh, he was here some time ago seeking a lost ring or some such, but to no avail. Can you imagine hunting for a ring in the snows of Forakel? Nevertheless, his quest may not have been as foolhardy as I first believed. For men out of Angmar have moved through this region and with them others I have never seen before. They reminded me of the men of Gondor, but stranger. They seek something here as well, and it may be that your quests are related. If you wish to find your lost ring, you must speak with the snowmen, the Lossoth, who call themselves the Lumivaki. This is their land, and they know it better than anyone. I suggest you speak with Lassi at Sri Kaila, for he knows best the mind of their chieftain. Okay, uh, talk to Lassi. Lassi is going to be further along. I'm thinking I might just hit up the stable master here, see what's up. Uh, Osferad. I don't think we can get there. Uh, where's... We can get there. Let's let's do that. Like I was saying last time, I really like this area. Um, especially once we get to the four northern passages. trying some stuff here on my desk. I'm kind of, this is sort of a test run to see if it actually will work or not. I had a, like a low profile mic boom arm and I wanted to see if I could get away with a sort of a, a road freestanding mic stand. Now it's takes up way less desk space. I'm hoping that it does the trick. It doesn't, this is a, a weird thing to complain about. Um, I wish the base, because when you pick this road desk stand, it's a DS-12 or something like that, when you pick it up, it's intensely heavy, and yet I wish it were twice as heavy, maybe, which I know seems like a crazy thing to say, but because you can't really use the mic arm fully extended for a lot of normal-sized mics. Uh, the Shure SM7B, forget it. Like, you can't. You basically have to have that thing so that the mic extending parts are still bent over the platform, the base. So it doesn't really let you extend it out to, say, get it completely over a keyboard, things like that. So I'm sort of giving it a test run to see, like, can I free up the desk space that my low-profile arm took up, which would allow me... You know, when we're doing the stuff with Patrick and Matt, like more space for books, you know, the things that I have going on around me when we're running a game. Um, or is it too much of a hassle? It may prove to be too much of a hassle and I'll go install the arm back again. But I'm kind of hoping that uh, that this works out. 
Maybe somebody's out there has made like a, a microphone desk stand that um, isn't too cumbersome in size, but still is able to, again, like if the base of the, the mic stand were about twice as heavy, which could make it like 10 pounds or something, then certain mics, you know, might be able to, uh, like right now I've got the OC16 on it. I'm able to extend the mic arm all the way out, but I'm not 100% sure it's stable. I mean, it's, it's stable enough. But what I'd love to do is I'd love to be able to get a, uh, you know, like those little extenders that you need for SM7Bs. I'd love to throw one of those on and get the OC16 just a little bit closer or at least have the stand a little bit further back. So that wasn't quite so close to my keyboard, but I'll have to see how it goes. A lot of people when they when they get on. When they get on camera or whatever, you know, you see them fidgeting with the mic a lot. And usually I try not to do that. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping this works out. I'm looking at my levels because so I bumped up my gain a little bit. And I think mostly I'm hitting where I want to be. You could probably drop down a touch, but not too much more. But it is, it is higher than it was when I had the mic, the low profile arm, because I was able to get the microphone a little bit closer. But we'll see how it goes. I've, I've tried it with three mics. The O16 is what I'm using right now. Like I said, I tried it with the, uh, the SM7B and I think I could sort of get it close-ish enough. But you have to use the extender there for the actual XLR plug, so that's a little tricky. But um, so you, then you have to contort the arm so it it's keeping most of its center of balance over the, the plate. Um, and the microphone's not really extending too far outward. And then I've tried it with the SE8. And I got to tell you, with the SE8, it was a dream. I wish I could get the SE8 to sound. It's, it's, I'll just say this. Um, the SE8 is not the same as an OC16. So for me saying I wish I could get them to sound the same is stupid. But... I could hear just enough of a difference that I was like, you know what, moment to moment, like I think as my main recording mics, I got to stick with the large diaphragms. I got to stick with the OC16 and I have to stick with the SM7B. Downstairs when I'm doing hopefully someday war games or like the Bookhouse Boys stuff, uh, the SEA is going to be way more viable than the wireless mics have been um, as a little bit of a boom. but. I think moment to moment, I, I think I would miss the little differences in quality that I, can, I, I believe I can hear. Um, even, yeah, but we'll see. So here we are, we've made it. Um, let me pop on my forced march. It's gonna make me run a little faster. And I think Oh, oh, no, no, no. We're at the halfway point. Let's see where the stable master can take us from here. Because we're trying to get up to Suri Kaila, which is basically the main city in uh, Forakel. I'm trying to... Is there a good place for this? Not really. Um, Yeah, let's see if the stable master can get us the rest of the way. Now, Ziggeland, yeah, it's over here. And it's another one of those areas, I think, a little bit like um, a Numenos, where you can, I, I think you might have, like, a, the ability to sort of control it, but maybe I'm misremembering that. So I'm kind of curious to see two things at play here. One... It's not like the microphone's, like, six feet away. It's you know, five inches, four inches. Um, I'm curious to see if boosting up that gain a little bit, which I think I've overdone, makes any difference, like to the sound quality. And two, I'm curious about any bumps from the keyboard, because now this stand is right next to the keyboard, but again, I've got like a, 
uh, a wool desk cover. So it's cloth. It's a little padded. And it's not like I'm pounding on the keyboard when I play this game, but it is a mouse and keyboard game. So I'm kind of curious to see these two things in action. And if I'm able to lose the boom arm or if I'm going to start missing it and it's flexibility. You know, the ability to throw any mic on there, no problems. The ability to get it in the exact position I want, even though it might make some of the desk space underneath it a little cumbersome. Um, Cause yeah, a lot of times when we're running games, I uh, I want some books nearby. You know, I got a couple of drinks going now that it's getting into fall. You know, we with our basic bitch tendencies, we tend to light candles. You know, it's just dumb stuff. So I'm hoping I'll be curious to see how this works. Uh, if I just get irritated by it or if I find like, yeah, no, this is fine. I often, I know in like a lot of mic things are like a hang 10 about six inches. So I feel like I could back this up even a little bit more, but I don't want to get it too far away. Um, anyway, we'll see. So I think that might go to some high level area. I mean, high level, it might be like a raid or something. Uh, but this is the part I love. This this part here, you know, they got the uh, sort of like a frozen Evan Dim, right? Um, maybe it's not actually a lake. Maybe that's like an inlet from the ocean. But and you have sort of these like uh, tribal cultures up here. But as you said, there are Angmarim, so something's up. can't recall if there was ever a mechanic in this where you would freeze. I feel like I remember something like that. Maybe like you couldn't really swim in the water or I, I have no idea. Anyway, so far so good. Yeah, you know, I was talking with Matt and Patrick on the uh, Discord today because I was kind of playing around a little bit with the SCA. To, and um, at first I was like, holy cow, this. I know it's not quite as good sounding as some of the other things I've tried, but I was like, it's close enough and just the footprint on it is non-existent. Took up so little space on my desk using this road uh, desk stand and I was like, this might be the way I have to go, even though, you know, but then I was like, ah, you know what? As smitten as I am at the moment with how much desk space I've freed up, which is really I have a real hang up with clutter. So <laughs> even if it doesn't make sense, I need I need just everything in its place. I need a lot of open space in front of me. I just want to, you know, I want to be able to put my books down without worrying about hitting a mic arm, you know, or sliding it underneath just general stuff. So yeah, anyway, we'll see how it goes. But this is sort of a dry run for that. You know, that's why I'm just sort of rambling on and on. But that SE8, yeah, if it was, it sounds really good, but I could just, I kept sort of A being it and I could, I could hear a difference. And I was like, you know what? I think over time, I would start to be like, you know, the first time I had to edit a podcast with the, with the guys, I'd be like, okay, I got to go back to the other mic. All right, we're going to talk to Lassie, who's right here. You, will find little trust here, you are a stranger here, a man from the south. We do not see too many of your kind, and we welcome even fewer. There are on the 
Uh, remember this Vanavaki you speak of, this Lairdin. He came to the Lumivaki seeking a lost ring. It was a foolish thing, looking for a bauble in these lands. You should not be so foolish. The Vanavaki did not have a fa- uh, did not have the favor of your Jana and barely escaped with his life from the dangers that we face here. Without the help of the Lumivaki, you would have no hope of finding your ring, and you will not have the help of the Lumivaki without the favor of your Jana. If you wish to gain our chieftain's favor, you must perform three tasks for the Lumivaki. Only then may you speak with your Jana. If you wish to learn of these tasks, speak with me again. All right, let's take the first one. Uh, Sinny might have a task to perform. Okay. Uh, seek out em- Emily across the s- steam lot. Sure. Okay, just give me the list of names here, bro. bro. Okay. Uh, let's see who we got to talk to. Okay, so they're all going to be here in this city. There's one. Okay. In wisdom, you have been sent to me, and only with wisdom will you earn the favor of the Lumivaki. Your Jana will not speak to you until you have earned the favor of wisdom, which I will confer upon you after you've completed my task. Look next to me. There you will find things of importance to the Lumivaki, things that help us survive in these cold lands. Put these things in their proper order, then return to me. How will you know what the proper order is? Through wisdom, of course. Warmth is of great importance in these frozen lands, so fire is a boon companion. Even more important is water, for without water there is no life. Once you have fire and water at your disposal, you have done much, but do not rest yet. You must then have stout weapons to protect yourself, but first, obtain food enough to lend yourself the strength to wield them. But before you have any of these necessities, a wanderer in these lands must have clothing, warm enough to protect him. So it sounds like it's clothing, water, fire, food, weapon. So we're going to go clothing first. Then water. Then fire. Then food. Oops, did I not do fire? Uh, food. And then weapon. I'm, I'm nervous I interrupted fire. You finished, and what have you learned? Indeed, the correct order. You listened with wisdom. So I'll confer upon you the favor. All right, there's one. Massive reputation boost, I guess, to make sure you uh, can get in the door. Okay, let's keep going. Here is Emily. The waters have frozen early. You are seeking favor of the Lumivaki. It's not a trifling matter, for we do not trust many of your kind. If you wish to gain favor with your Jana, you must perform a feat of strength to rival the hunters of the Lumivaki. For a long time, our hunters have thought and sought the snowworm Paksu Karva. Your Jana wished to make of its tusk a great horn, but. Paksu Karva has eluded our, eluded our hunters at every turn. Go forth and find Paksu Karva and bring me its tusk, and you will have gained my favor. Okay. So last seen among a group of other worms close by to the bay. They roam south each, east of here. Okay, so there's that. But I want to make sure I get... There we go. Let's 
destiny. So you wish the favor of Irjana, then you must gain this favor, and with that I can help you. The Lumivaki prize many qualities, but one of the most important is endurance. Often our hunters must survive the cold wilderness with naught but a dull knife and the garb upon their backs. If you can search out Ermas, I think, one of the finest trackers, you will gain great favor in the eyes of my people. Go into the wilderness and seek Ermas. If you succeed, return here to me. Ermas was last seen heading south along the road in Itama. So Itama's down here, okay. Okay. Yeah, this is why I just find this area quite striking. The colors you get, like, in this kind of weather, but then also you get, like, the northern lights in the evening. It's quite stunning. So can I... I don't know if I can... I don't know if I can hug the shoreline to get to the worms. That's what I wasn't sure of. If I had to... Maybe I can. I guess not. So maybe it shows up here in this dead end and um, it just needs to respawn. Oh, he's level 58. I don't know if he's just coming back to do quests. Oh, it's a champion. Okay, I was curious what the class was. Let me go in the water and see if there is a... Oh yeah, there you go, right away, right? Taking damage. So I'm not crazy in remembering the... Uh, the cold damage. Unless it's up top somehow? Alright, a lot of normal frost worms. I'm not sure. Is that the guy? Okay, that's it. I 
know what? Let's um Let's come back to this one. Give it time to respawn. Whoa. Again, I keep seeing these guys in different areas. I just I just don't recall suddenly stumbling across like an ultra mob boss, 300,000 morale, etc., etc. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna have a- ah, uh, you know what, I should've- well, no, because I was trying to get to that thing first. I was gonna say I should've just used the Stable Master to, uh... Sort of auto-travel to the other camp, but... I don't think it would've made sense to go back. We're gonna see how it's going, but, um... Matt has started, I think, an official Dark Souls 3 run that I think his intention is to archive on YouTube, so Black Lodge Trivia Night will finally have a Dark Souls 3 run. Um, I'm hoping that's the case, because uh, I've probably mentioned before, at least definitely in the Soul streams, Matt's good at those games, I'm not, so it'd be fun to watch him get through it and talk about it and find a find out the things that he finds interesting. I, I can, you know, I already know the things I find interesting, so I'd love to get another Black Lodge take on a, on a Souls game. So it's gonna so if it uh, if it goes all in, we're gonna I've been releasing video game content on Tuesdays, but if there's a couple of us doing it, I want to chat it over with Matt to see do we want to make it more frequent or do we want to just create a rotation so there's a lot of time between each chunk. I, I don't know what he thinks will be best. But uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully there's some Dark Souls 3 to be had. I'm, I'm looking for I was watching... He did it live on Twitch, and then he's going to archive it on YouTube. But, you know, you you know Twitch, those videos disappear after a while. I guess if you're not a certain level partner, if you don't pay, I'm not sure what. Okay, there's Ermas. You may return to Cine now. You have done well. Okay. That's it. Wellness check. He's good. That's good to know. Yeah, because if you fought, like, I've been rotating back and forth between 
one Tuesday it's Elden Ring, the next Tuesday it's Lord of the Rings Online, the book quests. I think I mentioned in a recent Lord of the Rings Online recording I've completed Elden Ring, so I was looking to fill the slot with a, a classic CRPG that I'd really very much like to do. Uh, but maybe I just let Matt take, well, I guess it, we'll see what, what schedule he thinks, you know, because we could do like Monday, Wednesdays, video game content, one for me, one for him. We could just alternate where I stick with the Lord of the Rings and let him on the alternating Tuesdays, Dark Souls 3 comes out. It gives you a chance to, um, you know, because, you know, everybody's busy. So sometimes you get a lot of time to record a it was on Twitch but I haven't put up the archive yet like a cat ass bachelor weekend marathon of Dark Souls 1 as I did last weekend um I should just yeah they're up on Twitch right now at the time of this recording it's early October 8th um but this video won't go up for a while by the time this video goes up it'll be gone so maybe by then though the I would have dumped the the archives, they're already on YouTube, I just gotta make them public at some point when it's not clashing with everything else. <laughs> because it was sort of an impromptu... Screw it, let me just run through Dark Souls because I feel like it. But yeah, it's just, um... Again, because it's... It may not seem like it, but the main point of this channel is... Tabletop RPGs, so I don't want to... At least personally, I don't mean to encroach too much on that. That endeavor. Oops. But at the same time, this is all meant to be fun. So whatever the, you know, what the hell, like. We get, we get the, we get the boys together once a week. You know, it's a lot easier to just pop in video games when we have time. So. On some level, who cares? The main thing is that this is a role-playing channel, so... Alright, that's who we're looking for up there, in the distance. Oh, it's not even a signature. go. Let's get out of here. Now, if you listen carefully, I think that you're hearing cracks of the, I think, the ice underfoot, which I thought was a nice little sound design touch. When I first heard it and realized exactly what I was hearing. Matt just picked up a PlayStation 5. And um, I think he was saying tonight he wanted to give uh, Demon Souls a try. I don't know if he's ever played that one. It takes much endurance and fortitude to survive in the cold wilderness with so little. I grant you the favor of endurance, but it will not alone be enough to gain you the full favor of your jhana. There must be others who require your assistance. Yep, we got it.
The shadows in Angmar have been stirred against us. You have succeeded in doing what the hunters of the Lumivaki have failed to do and brought me the tusk of Paku, Paksu Karva. I grant you the favor of strength. There we go. Even though it was sort of like three fetch quests, it, it felt thematically appropriate, right? Like, you're a stranger in a strange land, so to speak, and uh, yeah, you need to... ingratiate yourself a little bit enough so that they feel they can trust you. Is this the right... <laughs> Just jump on his lap. The Ritavin speaks your name. Welcome, man of the south. You have shown great worth in the eyes of the Lumivaki, and you have gained my favor. How may we be of help to you? We must speak, Atelavira. You've gained the favor of the Lumivaki, but you are not the only one to come seeking our help to find this ring. Why is it so important? No, do not speak of it. I fear it will only bring a black wind upon us. First came the Vanivaki, Lairdin, and then came you, but another awaits an audience with me. He makes powerful claims. Will you go with me to treat with him? You should know the claim he lays upon the ring. However, we will wait until you are prepared. When you are ready, speak to me again. All right. Are you ready to meet your opposition? Okay, so I think he just said Irian or something like that. I, I really butchered the name. No matter what I said, it was completely wrong. But, um... Did he say, like, Irian? Iriana or something? I, I don't know. You are a stranger to the duty then. Okay, let's gather the elders and meet with the emissary from Angmar. I will call together those who hold the secrets you seek, Black Lodge. Look, something draws near. Storm gathers. An evil wind blows. Oh. I have no time for the insignificant fools. Where is thy ruler? Oh, four insignificant fools. Where's your ruler? I have much to discuss with him. What is your business here? You have an ill air about you. An ill air indeed. The wind, air, and water are all servants to the Iron Crown of Angmar. Speak your peace, then be gone. I will not have my enemies walk freely through my lands. If they're your enemies, why are you... Okay, enemies? Nay, thou art wrong. It is Black Lodge, the enemy of Angmar and the Great Eye, who has brought me to thy lands. If thou were to deliver me mine enemy, a great friendship could be made between us. Leave now and speak no more of your falsehoods. I do not treat with my enemies, much less the Koira of my enemies. Thou hast made a foolish choice, base-born Kerr. Hold your tongue or I will remove it, depart, and do not return. If thou refuse, I will take it and the heads of your people as payment for thine insolence. Ooh, it's on. 
Didst thou truly believe that you could challenge me? Do not pay heed to his words. The Lumivaki have long endured the cold. If thou art not daunted uh, something, then I missed it. I will return, and when I do, I expect all to be done as I have commanded. Defy me, and thou will share thy fate with Black Lodge. What will we do? How can one fight air and the waters and fires of Angmar? Come, we must seek, uh, seek shelter from the storm. Do you wish to trade, Eta Lavieras? All right, let's uh, sell. Again, if I were smart, I'd be taking like the daily tasks where you have to collect these things and pick up some XP for completed quests, but uh, can't be bothered. Uh, what's this? Yeah. What's a basic? Uh, let me hold on to that. I don't know what that what that is. You know, maybe I shouldn't have sold that because I'm getting some level fifty armor. Except by the time I get there, I'll probably have something that's better. Like this is actually worse than what I'm. Well, it's yeah now. Agility, vitality. I mean, again, it feels like a wash. Let's see, is this anything? Nope. Okay, let's sell it. Okay. Yeah, like I said, I've been working on... I was thinking about a, a classic CRPG. Uh, it's a... It's part of a series. Um, I wouldn't do the whole series, but I would pick some out of the series, maybe. Um, but yeah, I gotta figure out... Gotta figure out... Uh, how to slot it in and not take up too much space so everybody else who wants to do something like Dark Souls 3 could get in there. And so you have it, man. The servants of the Iron Crown stand against, against you. An end must be put to the evils of Angmar. But my people will not help you as long as the shadow looms over us. There is one, however, who may help you. Uh, what are we looking at? 66, 13, vitality, same, fate. Whatever, it's, it's all... Let's take the one that's worth the most. Will you hear my words? There is a... Nakija, a seer, a seer, who dwells outside the village. She is powerful and does not fear the Lord of Storms. She may help you find your ring. You will find Saija, let's say that, Saija, at Nakikola, northwest of Kuru Lir... Okay. That is on the western edge of the Ice Bay. She is haughty and proud, but you may find her an ally against Mordrambor. Go, seek the wisdom of the ages. All right. Moving through chapter uh, book 13 nicely. Okay, so let's... um. <laughs> let's find the stable master and at least get us halfway.
Well, we've legitimately earned this portion of the trip. I never know how guilty to feel spending a mithril coin to unlock fast travel that we haven't actually unlocked. One of the things I want to do before I tackle this classic CRPG is do a little bit of research. I did that for Darklands, and then, I, I, like I was been saying somewhere, I forget where. Part of me wants to do one more session of Darklands just to sort of put a bow on that one, because uh, I never really wrapped it up. But I think I've done everything I want. I didn't complete the game, but I also specifically said I didn't promise a uh, playing through the main quest, and I, I sort of hit. Sort of hit a wall. So I need to. Part of me wants to do one more there and just see how it goes. Um, but who knows? But I did a little bit of research, you know, like I watched a couple of match chats. He has an interview, one of the only interviews that I know of, with the designer of Darklands. So it was like a three part series. So it was really fascinating to hear the designer himself speak about the game and how it came to be and sort of some of the behind the scenes drama surrounding it. And uh, yeah, so and, and, you know, I've read other things, so I'm sort of doing a little bit of that groundwork for this one, just because I want to be able to not just speak to it in terms of my perspective, but have a few facts about the game going in. Not, not that I'll ever be an authority, but just in case I want to make a connection or belabor a point as I want to do, um, at least I s sort of have some idea what I'm talking about. Do we start getting the northern? Yeah, you can see them off in the distance. I just, I, I don't know. I just find this such a beautiful area to explore. Also, the way, like, everything is just a silhouette off in the distance. I wonder if they're sort of simulationist enough to, you know, the further north you go, the more, like, day and night cycles extend depending on the seasons. There's no seasons in this game, so I'm not sure. How that works, if it works at all. Maybe I'll do this one honest. I'll sort of hit the other fast travels as I go, do it manually. In my idealistic approach to this, that's how I 
saw myself doing it, and then I, I know I cave all the time. I can't remember what's along this road, if it's actually all that treacherous, or can we just sort of zip over? Maybe the Angmara, maybe they're over here in the northeast, that path that sort of goes into the higher level areas that I thought about. Maybe that's the Angmarum sort of home base. You know, I've talked about this before. You know, I see, I, for a while, you know, when everything's new, you see everybody stream the same games, and for a little bit that was Baldur's Gate 3, but... I'm always conflicted about games like that, because I, I don't know if I'm just a... Like a wuss or some kind of... Lowbrow piece of garbage, but, um... You get into like a town and you're talking to everybody and picking up quests and I'm just like, oh my god, like, <laughs> I just want to get through this, I don't care. And so the idea of streaming that, it's a little bit why I sort of stopped Starfield. One, I, I didn't enjoy the, the out and about mechanics that much, but then the idea of like running around a city and talking to 45 people and I was just like, ugh, you know, who actually wants to watch this? But maybe you do, I don't know. At least with something like Baldur's Gate, everything was Baldur's Gate 3, everything would be fully voiced. But like one game that I really love, that I would love an excuse to go back to, is Planescape Torment, but that's got literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of words, so it feels like that's you know, my voice can barely handle just chit-chatting nonsense. If I actually had to read that much, that might be true torture for everybody involved. You know, I'm going back, like... Even like the research, it's all selfish, right? It's all because it's nice to have an excuse to do this, which is why, you know, I was, you know, talking about the SC8 microphone, because it's an excuse to figure out how to stream like a war game, which gives me an excuse to do it. I find that, um, like a lot of people, I'm very busy. You know, kids, family, job, etc. And so if I can bizarrely turn it into if I can combine multiple interests into one activity, it's literally you know, it's literally the idea of, you know, killing two birds with one stone. So it gives me a reason to do it. It gives me this manufactured Pressure is the wrong word, but you know what I mean? Like, it's a manufactured motivation. Like, oh, I got to get something up on the channel. I don't have to do that at all. Nobody cares. But, um, 
But when you sort of couch it that way and sort of train yourself, and I wish what I need to do is I need to do that about writing. I haven't written in a long time and I need to figure that out. Okay, so we made it to this fortress. So let's continue on to Kuru Liri. Oops. Again, should I be taking quests? I'm about to hit 48. That's not bad. But, um... I don't know. Will there come a time where I, uh... I need to catch up again? Okay, so I need to get north. Let me cut this way and then... And not just writing, like, you know, there's a bunch of books I want to read, there's... And, and sometimes those things conflict, right? Like, suddenly the RPG stuff I've turned into combining with other interests, such as film, audio, video production. And suddenly it feels like a, a weight that I have to take care of instead of, like, you know, getting to the backlog of novels and books I've received as Christmas gifts and et cetera, et cetera, stuff like that. Um, so, you know, like I said, I, I love writing, but I haven't written seriously in a little over a year. Just little tiny bits here and there, but I haven't found the, the key to turning that into something. Like, I, I don't want to do a blog, but I understand the idea of like a blog at least gets you like, oh, I need to get something up every day. And so you find yourself writing, but then again, you're not writing maybe the thing you want to write. For me, it'd be long fiction, long form fiction. Okay, so I'm worried that, um, am I going to hit a cliff or is this a way down? Looks like we're good. Okay. Enemy's getting a little tougher out here. So I'm just being a little more careful. I loved this part of uh, the map. Just where we're headed is just extremely isolated in like northernmost part of the world. And then you know I you know they mentioned it um, in the description of how to get here, and I don't know the lore very well, but you've got like a shipwreck over there in the bay. So maybe we'll get a little bit more of that story. I'm not sure. Is this the most northern camp on the map? I think so. Uh, Karn Dune is north, but not quite this far north, so... Yeah, this might be uh, one of the camps, like the edge of the world, so to speak. Because even if you go this way, it sort of implies there's more there, right? You know, I wonder if I should be making one of these milestones, my new... I don't think you can ever muster up here. So if you get high enough reputation, you can get from here to here with a swift travel. Now, what was I supposed to do? Was I supposed to... Can you go into any of these tents? I thought... I 
Oh, I'm not. Okay, that's that's why. I was like, I have to go even further to the edge. And even out here on the edge, you still got ancient ruins. Like lore of a bygone age, which again is part of what I love about Middle Earth so much. It's got a dwarven vibe maybe to it. All right, let's uh, finally made it. Let's see what she has to. I don't know if I completely landed on how to pronounce this name, but let's see. May I be of help to you? You come from Iryana? I have no fear of the stone dwellers from Angmar. They can do me no harm. I will share with you that what wisdom I have. Long ago, a king from the south came to Forakel, seeking refuge from the witch king of Angmar. Arvadui was his right name. But we called him the Gaunt King because he was frail from hiding in ancient mines of the dwarves. The Gaunt King begged for aid from the Lossloth, Lossoth, uh, Lossoth, which was given but hesitantly, for the Lossoth feared the wrath of the Witch King. The Gaunt King stayed with the Lossoth until a great sea monster appeared in the ice bay bearing many elves. We warned the Gaunt King not to go forth upon the back of the beast, but to wait for the summer so that the power of the Witch King would not be so strong. He would not listen, and the storms slew the beast. It is said that the body of the beast may yet be seen in the ice bay north and east of here. It may be uh, that you may find the knowledge you seek upon the corpse, its corpse. So, all right, we're going to go to that shipwreck. Which again is like a cool thing, but... um. <laughs> it's always like the, you know, the trope that when you... north and east of here that looks south and east but um the trope of like you know the the simpler people calling the you know the beast you know it's, it's a boat <laughs> I'm sure they use boats here unless it literally was a beast I don't know but Given that we're heading to a shipwreck, I doubt that it was literally a beast. Like in Indiana Jones, when, um, well, I mean, he's doing it to be poetic. He calls it like the belly of the beast, like inside a tank. Let's see if we can just blow by everybody. And uh, what are we up to? Chapter 5 of Book 13. Okay, we might need to... Let's see if I can pop this guy separately because he's a signature. Okay, I built up some heals, so let's see if we can get some bleeds going, because I think we're basically in the black in terms of morale. Again, that's the thing I'm always looking for, like, as soon as I'm at, like, break even for morale, then I feel like I'm in good shape and I can just put it to bed, so to speak. Are we not done? There we go. Guess that was lag? I, I don't really know. Um, okay, so... Pop this next one. This one we're going to put down quick. Double bleed. Walk away. Another signature. But let's just focus on the bleeds right off the bat. And see. I don't know if I actually got a bleed off on this other guy. Must have done something. All right. So we got triple bleed on this guy. Hey. Hey. 
I'm gonna build up some health just because I came into this one a little low. Okay, and just a little bit of health just to top me off. And then it's full beat them to death mode. key. That's fine. Well, that went poorly. Didn't register the key presses. Let's see. Okay, got the bleed off, so it's going to go down. Everything feels a little sluggish. I don't know if that's just me or if I'm missing something. What is... If there's any truth to the idea that um, the Wednesday updates sort of help reset everything with the lag, then maybe... Because as at the time of this recording, I am getting a little close to that Wednesday deadline. It's a Monday morning. Uh, but who knows? You have found the shade of Averdui, last king of the Arthedain. Thou are not of the Lossoth, but are a man from my lands of old. Why come ye into this terrible place? Hail to thee. Thou dost not belong in this place, but it matters not. Alas, so much evil has befallen this world, and remain here in pen penitence. My own curse was brought down upon my head. In pride I ignored the warnings of the Lossoth, for I wished to return to my kingdom. The storms of the Ice Bay brought ruin to the vessel and all aboard her, and in despair and wrath I cursed myself for my pride. Redemption does not lay beyond hope, however, and for those who follow in my footsteps may yet bring me peace. Sorry, and those who follow. Okay. In the dwarf mines of South uh, South and Lansima, where we uh, first hid from the agents of the Witch King, we were forced to abandon many things. One such item is a book of heraldry, which details the lineage of my people. Go forth and find it, then bring it to the, uh, to the Dunedan, who watches the cold lands in Surikila. He will take it to his lord. All right. Again, you know, it was what I was saying when I was riding past the uh, the ruins up top there. You know, it's just the bygone age, yeah, sure. But it's a, uh, but it has power, like actual power in the world. So in this case, See if I can get by everybody. You know, his family's legacy, that history, might be enough to help him break his curse. Yeah, again, I don't quite know what that red means. Does it mean, um, like it's enemy control? Like, I thought there was some, like, that symbol is used in a Numinas. I thought it was used in a few other places. I feel like it demarks control, loyalty.
<laughs> Better streamers that you could choose to spend your time with. <laughs> Probably know the answer to that. But I do appreciate the folks that have jumped in and checked out going through the story here. Now I wonder, let me see something. I was curious, I mean, you can sort of still see the Northern Lights, but I was kind of curious about was like, since it's snowing, is it cloudy? And in some ways, yeah. I mean, they've sort of muted the sky box. There we go, come out of it. Because I search for a lot of like audio videos on YouTube, like, oh, how does this mic sound? What can you do for EQ? Blah, blah, blah. I get like sort of fed a lot of stuff. And there's one video, and I'll never remember to find the, the link, but it was basically a voiceover artist talking about how to get rid of clicks and pops and stuff in your, in your mouth noises. And uh, some of it was interesting, um, like, you know, chewing a piece of sugarless gum. Apparently sugar can help spark those mouth noises a little bit. Uh, he's like, oh yeah, green apple, the, the tartness of the green apple can help eliminate that. <laughs> but then he was like, yeah, you basically also want to avoid sugar and caffeine. And then I was like, oh, like my slightly sweetened iced tea that I drink on every occasion that I record. So, that's a price I'm just not willing to pay. So you're going to get all my, whatever weird mouth noises I make, you're going to get them. For the sickos that are here for the mouth noises, I salute you. Um, let's see. Like this should not be this hard to find. I think it just came at it from a weird angle. <laughs> I think I completely came at this from the wrong angle. I don't think I can get in from this side. If I jump in this water, is it still freezing? Am I going to die? Minimum level 90. Again, I wonder, is this like a quest? Is this something actually going on? Or is it... Uh... Just a reward for higher level characters for coming back to areas they probably don't really need to come back to. Okay, sorry, I just had to... I'm allergic to hay, and we have a little bit of hay here in the living room for our pets, and so I just need to... <laughs> we need to, like, you know, get it taken care of and moved to its proper location, but in the meantime, it's, uh, <laughs> making my nose run a little bit, uh, so I apologize. Okay, so I need to go...
a little further. How much further south? Is it down there? Can I femur shatter my way down the hill? Oh, disappointing. It's looking forward to a good uh, compound crunch. Ooh, dower hand looter. Okay, we're getting into some of the shitbag dwarves. Okay, this, uh... No, that won't do. Okay. Put bleeds on both and uh, walk away. All right. Um, there's one. There's two. Okay, so these, the last two gambits, you know, the first one was, um, Onslaught. That's not what I actually did. It missed my key input for building up a bleed. And the second one did the same thing. It went to a, uh, like a deft strike or something, but that is not what I actually pressed. So there is some kind of, um, I feel like there's a little bit of lag going on here at the moment. I wonder what you get for all those. I mean, I could just Google it, I guess, but. All those, like, collect the pages quests. Like, are they. Yeah, this is a little. Alright, let's see. Where are we trying to go? This might be one of those cases where I, uh. Burn the mithril coin to get out. There we go. I have to be careful because I want to make sure I get the actual heals off and not some nonsense. Okay, all right. Oh, all right. <laughs> that should be the subtitle of this run, like streamers who are far more knowledgeable than I. <laughs> Probably know the answer to the thing I'm pondering. Dinadane Captain, okay, I'm doing pretty well health-wise. Okay, if I double up that, that should take care of him. Oop. Yeah. The dirtiest leg break sound in all the gaming. So what do you think? Do I need to go into the foreman's quarters or? Nope, okay. Oh, 
These two do not have their friends' backs over there. <laughs> Just letting, letting them deal with the... Uh, Pico troubles in the other room. Not my job. <laughs> but they all can come together <laughs> to attack me. All their differences forgotten. Need to build up some health because I've let that get a little low. Shouldn't be too hard if I get the two highest ones stacked. It's really sluggish, I gotta say. Like that's not what I meant to do, but I'll take it just to build up a little more health. Oh, look at that. Level 48, done. Uh, it's 47's done. Dinged 48. So the problem is, I'm not 100% sure where I'm trying to go. I've just sort of been speeding down to the bottom. That might not have been the right move. I just... Made assumptions that I might not have needed to make. I just assumed the Book of Heraldry was sort of deep in the mine somewhere because of the hiding. I wonder if it's, uh, what is this? Uh, Snowblind. That's what I was wondering. Okay, nice. Yeah, none of these are firing off. I don't know what's going on. I thought that one was dead. These creatures are not happy about the Dower Hand presence. So I don't know if it's one of those things where, like, the mines invaded their cave, so to speak. They, they dug a little deep and started encroaching on their natural habitat. Oops. But one thing's for certain <laughs> they all gotta die. Because that's the only speed I know. When you're a hammer of death, everything looks like a nail. Nope, not what I meant to do, but that was my fault, not the lag. That should do it. I should be healing but I don't think I'm gonna get it off.
What you're seeing here is probably the way you're meant to <laughs> traverse the mine. I just sort of fell down holes until I uh, hit bottom here, but... Now, what's this? Oh. So I guess maybe I was wrong in wondering... Nope, had the boot ready to go and I blew it. I better get some healing going real fast. <laughs> you can see, like, you know, just focusing on healing, you know, I'm almost back. You know, I was down to 400. That's not zero, but it's not a lot. And with, yeah, just popping like a, the whole series, the two, the three, and the four. Uh, two, three, four, and five. You know, you get all the way back up and you're good to go. So it's what makes like, you know, I've talked about how durable the warden in, is and how I sort of need that because I'm terrible. Uh, that's the secret, right? You just really focus on healing and maybe rune masters have the same if they go to their like healing side of the or you know minstrels or whatever i guess even are the classes really that different i guess is some question on some level when this game is made to solo but um but i imagine the rune keepers would not have the durability But combining this and, and like neither with the lore masters, neither with with the minstrels, like I feel like the durability of the warden class is is unique, even though the ability to self heal may not be. I'd be curious about the numbers, so to speak. Has somebody run the numbers to talk about like you know guardian versus warden solo toughness? And I guess, again, it all is in the hands of the player. But I do find it interesting that the Warden is sort of labeled when you get to the opening screens. Like, hey, this is a more advanced class, and I understand why they say that. But... I feel like on some level... I don't want to say it's simple, but it's... It's durability, I feel like, is... Maybe tailored a little bit to someone who's not new to MMOs, but who might be new to Lord of the Rings Online. And nope, I need to, I didn't put a heal a uh, bleed on this guy. There we go.
Now I'm wondering, uh, you know what? I, uh... I don't recall this part, so maybe this was part of their hiding. They actually had to... I'm gonna check out the... I think he should go down now. Okay, so the Book of Herald Heraldry lies in the Dwarven Mines, so I'm in the right spot. Uh, it's abandoned deep in the old Dwarf Mines and bring it to a ranger. Okay, so they haven't given us any... any guidance to how to find it. But it does feel like I'm in a, a new section. Let's go deeper and just see if that helps at all. I do feel like I wonder if it's a technical limitation. I, I mean, they put like rings like right where you're supposed to go on the overland map, but they never do on the underworld maps. And I'm wondering why not? Um, because honestly, like I think you could make the case, like, finding a book in this, this is, you know, this is not a small dungeon. I didn't realize this was a fellowship quest, but, um... Uh, let me see if I can do this, and then... Because position does seem to matter with this one. In fact, it seems to hit the second person harder than the actual target. Unless the numbers, like I saw a 500 fly up last time, there was a 200 when he was the main target. But yeah, I mean, I think you can make the argument it's a little bit like finding, this is where I was earlier, right? Like a needle in a haystack. Right, isn't that where I dropped down from? It just seemed weird because it feels like the map is not... No, this is on the other side of the... Of that hidden door. Is this just um, repeated geography? Gonna fire that off, baby. There you go. It's getting a little sluggish, so I'm gonna do a little healing just in case. Let me see, like, for, oh, no, no, it hit the main target that time harder. Okay. Oh, look at this. I think we need to find out where this hole goes, and, um... Some more of that dirty, dirty leg break. Here we go. I mean, I don't know if it's immersion breaking to Just mark on the map where the thing is, but I mean they mark on the map where everything else is, and um I 
I don't know, people seem to love Skyrim and they'll walk you right to the exact point you're trying to get to at every step of the way. You know, I saw, you know, because I, you know, upload garbage to Twitch and blah, blah, blah. I saw a few people doing, like, streaming the main quest of Skyrim. Because I've often contemplated, like, how, do you, how does one stream? Like, I know there was the Skyrim grandma who recently, I think, retired. And to her credit, I think she just, <laughs> I think she was just a charming person that probably enjoyed being in the world of Skyrim, and that's compelling enough to watch. Um, let me put this bleed on this guy. Did I not get the bleed off? Um, but otherwise, like, how does one stream? So, like, you know, I guess I, I guess it's not that different than what I encountered here. Like, you know, how do you stream an MMO when you're not just an MMO content streamer, like, leveling this class? Like, when you're approaching it from, how do I present this game? Um... And so I focused on the main story. So maybe that's not the craziest thing in the world to... Fuck, I'm right back where I started. Uh... Interesting that going through the... So maybe, yeah, maybe it's just not that different. Maybe, you know, yeah, you just focus on the main quest. The reason why I was curious is just because I've never... Never played Skyrim. I mean, that's not true. I mean, I've played a lot of Skyrim. I've never beaten Skyrim. I've never experienced... main storyline of an Elder Scrolls game. That's not true. I um, I beat Oblivion. I've never beaten Morrowind. I've never beaten Skyrim. And I definitely haven't beaten the old ones. Although, I have to say there's something... Tempting's the wrong word because I don't think, you know... Um, but they've done like... Um, Daggerfall Unity, so it runs in the Unity engine and cleaned it up, and you can mod it, and you can make, you know, the randomized dungeons a little bit easier, so you don't just get stuck and screwed, and, you know, a lot of improvements, a lot of quality of life stuff that, um, makes me curious about, uh, the roots of that series. But seems daunting. <laughs> but, you know, if you just stick to the main quest, you know, maybe it's not so bad. I, I mean, because those games, at least Skyrim will sort of scale with you, I guess. So it doesn't really matter if you don't. Wow, all that. And I finally find a page of the missing Dunedain, yada, yada. I wonder what the drop rate is that, or is it just every 75 you kill, you get one? <laughs> MMOs incentivize <laughs> weird behavior. When I murder someone or something, what is the percentage chance that I get the... <laughs> Pavlovian bit of food. Okay, so there's nothing up there. Over here is where the creatures were attacking, but I don't know if I really covered it.
Nope, screwed up my eight. Let's see if I can get out of that. I built up the bleed, but this guy was so close to death, I switched over to put it on him just to chip away while I was finishing up. Can't really zoom in on the map, so it's hard to tell did I really cover that northeast corner. I definitely didn't cover whatever's down here, but... The problem is you can't go two feet without running into three guys. Oops, got the back, got it backwards. Um, what does that do? Light damage? Oh, that's a lot of light damage. I gotta remember that. It doesn't just have to be bleeds. I don't know if light damage does as much against these guys, but... Because, again, <laughs> more knowledgeable streamers would know the answer to that. Uh, okay, so which way do I go? Oh, wait. Northeast is not the way. Is northeast just the way out of here? It is. Okay, so I don't have to worry about that. Where else can I go? So south is into... Stand all the way back here and make me run. I'm going to finish this guy off with some heals just so when I run into this group, I'm in a little bit better shape. So let me see, can I stack light damage? Piercing strike? Yeah, okay. Now can I go, I don't think he's gonna live long enough to check if there's a five on that one. Uh, four. Spear of virtue, spear of fate, okay. So that's, hmm. Like, I assume light damage would impact people who are, like, more inherently evil, where these Tycho creatures I could see just being creatures. Are they actually motivated by evil? Um, it's hard to say. Uh, okay, so which... Can I go this way? There's nothing there. So it has to be this way. Okay, let's see the max. That's doing 359 every four seconds. So the math gets a little complicated because it's not always per two seconds, one second. Like the, um, that maxed out light damage was 68 every one second for 11 seconds. The one, the four was 200 points of light damage every two seconds for, you know, just... The math goes all over the place and it's probably not something I could just sit here calculating on the fly of like which is more advantageous light or bleed. You should get a soundboard and that soundboard should have one sound on it and that one sound should be 
my bad singing of more knowledgeable streamers probably know the answer to that question. And I can just hit it every time I wonder something out loud that's probably been solved. I can't recall if there was something past Boar's Rush. No. Okay. Okay, so I think I've checked this area out thoroughly. Let's cut to the right and see if I missed anything over there. And then I'll work my way up. If it's not here, I'll start methodically going, uncovering the map on each level. Oh, interesting. I, I, I like that touch. What I notice is I think when I get snow blind, they also get snow blind. Now, can you get rid of snow blind with either of those? Maybe. Uh, or did it just because it died? Maybe it did clear it out. Now, have I been here? I've been here before, but let's just be thorough. I'm going to go right off the bat with healing because there's three of them. I'm going to pop this thing shield and shield for a quick... So I feel like I'm decent on healing, so let's... Now just beat them to death and see how that goes. Double bleeds should make quick work. Okay, so I haven't cleared that way, so let's quickly check down here. You know, I did a, um, at the time of this recording, <laughs> I streamed some Bloodborne off my PlayStation 5. I've, I don't think I've actually ever streamed on Twitch for my PlayStation. And I think I set the audio up wrong so that on my local recording, I guess that I'll throw up at some point, just on the channel as an archive. Um, <laughs> it uh, it has all the audio, but it's I did it on the wrong channels, I think, um, so that the PlayStation and the microphone are not isolated from each other like they normally are when I do it properly on my local recordings. Uh, the Twitch stream has no game audio at all, <laughs> which I now I didn't realize, and I probably should have trying to figure out how to check that. Um, a couple people were in chat and they didn't mention it, but maybe, you know, it's just like, yeah, you never know. Sometimes the audio is quiet, whatever. Or they're just happy to watch the gameplay and it doesn't matter. But um, I felt pretty dumb. I think I've since corrected it. But yeah, it was just like, whoops. Um, it's not what I intended to do. There we go. I'm gonna pop a little healing. Just to make sure. I'm gonna pop this to shake off that stun. So I'm just gonna call this out. Running around in the world, not that I see a ton of other players, but one of the things I almost never see in my running around are minstrels. And I'm just curious, are they just not that interesting to solo? Are they... Just curious what's going on. Um, because, you know, 
you know, obviously I'm playing a warden. I like guardians. I, I like durable classes, and I feel like a minstrel that's like a dedicated healer could keep itself alive, himself or herself alive, pretty decently. So that durability appeals in a way. Uh, let's see. Deliver the Book of Heldry to a ranger encamped in Forakel. I'm going to burn this. Don't judge me, but I just don't want to find my way out. How can I be of service? What is this? A Book of Heraldry once belonging to Arvidui of Arthedain? Aye, oi. You say you've seen the spirit of Arvidui himself. I will take this at once to Rivendell. This tale must be told to Elrond and Aragorn. Nice. Talk to Arvidui. Where did it... So we're back on the other side, but it might not be There's stable masters all along the route. So let's see how far we can get. Greetings, um, we're looking to go to Zigland is the ruins. What's this one called? Okay, we can't get there. So let's get to the ruins. I'm going to swift travel it. I know we haven't built up a reputation yet, so that might be impacting the routes we can take, but, um... So let's see how we can do. Alright, we got to Ziggeland. Can we get to... I don't think we can. Uh, Kuruliri. Yeah, maybe it's just a one-way trip. Uh, that's fine. Uh, let me see. Uh, give me one... Let me just kind of do one quick thing. I'm trying to think, you know, if you look at the map, yeah, I, mean, I wonder if it is really a, um, a reputation thing or if it's just they give you the stable master to get back, but to get there, you're always on your own. Okay. Um, bum, bum, bum. Yeah, let's just hoof it. <laughs> um, maybe I should have a second thing on the soundboard where it's me badly singing about how more knowledgeable streamers would not make dumb puns like that. But uh, yeah, something... Is it not letting me... I'm going to just grab this. I don't know. Again, the, the conventional wisdom, the smarter players than I 
say what you should do is you just grab these. Because as you are murder hoboing all of Middle Earth, you're almost certain to get them. Uh, but I, what I don't need is I don't need. Probably can get rid of all of these. I don't want to get. Yeah, I don't need these highlighted. At some point, I'm going to get back to these warden quests. Um, but they're still gold, which means like even at level 48, it feels like these are like level 50 kind of quests. So it's not like they're pressing like I should have done them 35 years ago. Um, deed. Okay, Dowerhand Slayer. Yeah, I guess I'm working my way toward that. Um, can I, it wasn't letting me get on my horse and I don't know. There we go. Or maybe I was taking the wrong shortcut. I'll blame the game. Yeah, I mean, apparently, I mean, obviously it makes sense. You, you know, I'm constantly selling, you know, 200 broken swords, 35 furs. I'd rather get experience than money. You know, the money at this point means absolutely zero. And I wonder if uh, the game is better for it. You know, I am, um, you know, I've said, like, I played this game when it first came out and money was a big deal. Getting a horse was a level 35, five gold investment. Uh, and even though I basically, and I knew that was coming when I started my initial characters and I was like, I'm not going to spend anything. I'm just going to repair equipment. And you know, I think you had to buy skill upgrades and stuff like that. And I was still short cash. Um, probably made the, uh, the jobs that you could take on, like, you know, mining, lumberjacks, whatever, a little more important because then you could craft and sell. Probably brought more. You know, then it meant that you had to pay attention to auction house auction houses if you needed materials and stuff to proceed down the roads that you needed to proceed down. Um, you know, who knows? what I feel like is in making this game this may not be a fair statement but <laughs> but I'll say it anyway I feel like in making this game into what it is it's a more you know chill laid back completely soloable ride through Middle Earth they've sort of left giant chunks uh not giant might be too much of an exaggeration but they left chunks of the mechanics on the side of the road like money doesn't matter uh the auction houses i mean it's there for if you want it but it doesn't matter um equipment doesn't matter crafting doesn't matter And then, of course, I'm saying that as somebody who does not do raids, maybe you're like, well, yeah, obviously that's everything matters then. But I can't tell, have they sort of neutered? I'm going to the boat. That's my problem. I, I feel like I'm going to the cave and I'm not. I'm going actually to the boat. So I've got to make sure I get on the right path down the hill. I think it's right here. Um... There it is. Uh, yeah, so. But maybe that, yeah, maybe that's been neutered as well, you know, just to make it an easygoing experience.
Well, that's a mess of a <laughs> gambit. Um, let's try this. Let's clear that off. All right. Let's, let's yeah. Let's just see if I click these. How am I doing on health? Okay, it's not as bad as I thought. I was a little worried there because I hadn't been paying attention. Let me clear off some of those status effects. Oh, I'm ro rooted. Okay, there we go. Let's take care of this guy. Again, let's clear off some of these status effects. I should be more diligent about, like, whenever that thing is ready again, I should be grabbing it just to, you know, like, there's no need for me to suffer status effects. The other, of course, is it doesn't really matter, but you know what I mean, right? Like, if I'm trying to do my best to actually play the game and not, like, sleepwalk through it, when I have, uh, I can shake that off, but not yet, I should be, you know, trying to take advantage of what my character can do. See if I can clear that one off. Yeah. And, you know, like, and I think, like, that might make the game more fun. Like, you know, when I'm, you know, like, right now, I'm, like, <laughs> you know, still easing into the day, so to speak, as I'm getting in a little before my work day starts. Um... But, yeah, I could see how that might make the game a little more interesting. Even if it's not completely necessary to getting by. Bear a great grief upon me. Why hast thou come? Thank thee, friend from the south. Thou hast earned me one step closer to redempt redemption. Pride can be such a terrible thing. I desired out of pride to return to Fornost and cause the deaths of many elves. Uh, but I speak of things that I should not dwell upon. How can the last king be the living? I may one day forgive my pride, but that day is not yet come. Long after the Thoraval perished, another ship came into the Ice Bay. It, too, was from Mithland, and I can only assume it was seeking news of the Thoraval and its crew. That ship also... <laughs> oh, God. All right. That ship also perished. So, dude, it's not just this one ship it's, you're carrying. <laughs> um, and I can only assume it was seeking news of the Thoraval. Uh, that ship also perished, but the elves attempted to flee its destruction. I do not believe they perished in the cold waters, at least not all, but I cannot say what their final fate was. Perhaps the seer of the Lossoth, who sent thee to find the ship would know, return to her and seek her guidance once more. Okay. Man, I feel so bad about, you know, my pride taking down the ship I was on. What about the ship of the everyone who came to look for you? The who? <laughs> Never heard of him. Can I get through without losing my horse?
Uh, where? Yeah, there we go. As I'd say, are we heading in the right direction? And we are. All right. Um, not sure. Oh, okay. I was gonna say I'm not sure what's going on. It's lag. You're watching it in real time. So that's sort of, you know, you can sort of see it. So I, I, okay, I it took me about two seconds to get off my horse. I hit the shortcut and then. Although, do I need the cave? Yeah, I need the cave behind this place. Okay, I'm hitting it now. Okay, so you get an idea of the delay. So you can see how, like, if you have a rhythm sort of based. I guess all of it's rhythm based, right? You're waiting for cooldowns, you know, reset, stuff like that. Okay, you can, again, see the lag in real time. Um, yeah, you can see how that would throw you off, right? Sometimes it's me sucking at the game, but I think some of what was going on in the, uh, in the Dwarven, the Dowerhand mine, uh, was not all me, so. speaks your name. You found the body of the sea monster. You found also the shade of the Gaunt King. This is most unexpected, but perhaps not as surprising as it might have been. So that's, I wonder why it's like, this is most unexpected. Like, you literally told me, well, you know what? I'm not going to judge. We must speak, as you have spoken with the Gaunt King, I will tell you what I have learned of this, his story. But first, there are things you must do. My information does not come without a price. Speak to me when you are ready to hear the tasks I have for you. Chapter 8. A test of the cold. All right. Okay. Uh, to the south and west, ice giants have come down from the mountains, threatening all who hunt in the lands. Go forth and meet them. Drive them from the lands of the Lossoth. Such a deed will help to prove your loyalty. You may find them easier to deal with if you draw them to the hot springs that spout up within their camp. When you have completed this task, return to me for further instructions. I'm going to grab this one and let me see what the other one is. Will you hear my words? Spirits of Angmar. Upon the western shores of the Ice Bay, where the storms often rage the worst, dwell fell spirits sent from Angmar to trouble the Lossoth. These demons raise up terrible whites and make, it, make of it a place of great dread. Go forth and banish these creatures from the shores of Forakel. You will find them above this cave, south and west from its mouth, and then north into the ruins. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you've fulfilled this task, return to me here. Okay. All right, let's go take care of these things, and let's uh, see what's up. Okay, so, yeah, we have to sort of hook around to the ruins nearby, right there. Now, can I cut up this way? Maybe not. Okay. Isn't so bad. Um, I was wondering. I was. I was just looking over. It's like it's literally just kill five. That's a mess of a gambit, but 
I did get the interrupt off, even though I could have done it faster. Okay, so that takes care of that. Uh, ice white cold arrow. Okay. Now, defeat the ice giants. Let's hop on the horse and check out the map. A little bit further to the south, but not too bad. You know, as uh, I know, I go on droning on and on about audio stuff a lot. And I think I've come to a decision. I'm not a hundred percent sure yet. I want to think on it a little bit more, but um, I think I'm going to ditch my Shure SM7B. It's a microphone that is always sort of like. <laughs> mocking me like I, I I just I I don't know if it's just quote unquote like doesn't sound great with my voice I don't know if it's because I can't EQ it or at least it needs more EQ than like the road Roadcaster Pro 2 can do in real time I, I, I don't know what it is but um I think uh what what comes from it is that um, it's a microphone. I like I, like you know I have it. I need to figure out how to make it work. I'm constantly trying to figure out how to make it work, and I'm never a hundred percent happy with how I make it work. And I need to focus on what I'm doing here because these guys are gonna kick my ass. So okay, going into full healing mode. I'm gonna chip away. Uh, gonna get some shields up, and then go back into healing. This, this is going poorly. Um, okay, got the five and got the two. So let's get the three. I want to get knocked that way because that could trigger more. Let's get four going. Let's go back to two. Uh, yeah, but it's just like I have other microphones that... Um, I like the sound that I've gotten on it, and with the shore, I'm constantly feeling like I need to spend more time with it. I need to figure this out. Uh, I don't need to figure it out. Um, gotta fire that off. Oh, I'm stunned. Where's the... Okay. And interestingly enough, the microphone that helped me realize that is the Shure SM57. Um, when I EQ'd it, I was able to sort of get into the ballpark of what I always wanted the Shure SM7B, what I thought it was supposed to sound like based on what I've seen in like videos. Now, videos aren't really necessarily a fair thing because like an actual uploaded video, say like Potato Jet when he does like a camera review, or he has an audio guy on that often we'll talk about. EQ. Like they can do much more advanced EQing because it's a video. They're not having to do it in real time. Like you would for a stream. So I often like hear other people's stuff and I'm like, why does mine not getting closer to that? Like theirs is smooth, but achieving a clarity that I, and I just spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours trying to like, what am I doing wrong? using the Procaster's tools. Maybe if I were to do it in like Premiere or, you know, DaVinci Resolve with more control. Or, you know, honestly, like, the Rodecaster Pro 2 can give you a lot of options, but it's sort of, It 
it's, it's sort of, I, I don't know, it's sort of, for somebody who doesn't know this stuff, it abstracts some of it, right? You have like the aural, A-U-R-A-L, exciter, not to be confused with my online handle, the oral exciter, no, not really. Um, but it's, um, it says you should get him by the hot springs, I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, and just at some point, I'm like, why am I wasting my time doing all this when I have multiple other microphones that I genuinely like the sound of? Um, and so maybe there's somebody out there that can use the SM7B for a price. You know, I'll get some of my money back on it, but I'll stop having it acting like this albatross hanging over me like, why can't you figure me out? It just seems weird, like, I don't, I don't claim to be good at any of this, but, um, it's, it's just the one microphone I can't get to sound how I want it to sound, which is fairly natural, um, but smooth, you know, and like, I feel like, I feel like I've accomplished that. At a level where, like, a non-professional idiot can accomplish it. So, I don't know. And, and actually, it's not just this SM57 uh, that helped me really. It's part of it. But having the... Um, having an Austrian audio mic back in the mix also helped me realize it. Like, OC16... And like the 18 before it, I really liked when I was using it. Um, and I probably did it backwards. I probably should have gotten rid of the SM7B and kept the OC18 instead of letting the SMB make me feel bad about having an OC18 and not using it 100% of the time. Oh, crap. <laughs> He respawned. Okay, what am I doing here? Uh, besides getting crap lagged out of me. Um, okay. First and foremost, let's start healing immediately. See if I can survive long enough to get the five up. Go back to the two. Okay, one's down. Go with the three, because I got that ready to go go back to the two, and then I'm going to go with the four. Lag is kicking in a little bit. So... Because that's the trick. If I throw my timing off once, it might put me in enough of a hole. Okay, no, no, I'm good. Uh, it might put me in enough of a hole where it starts to snowball. But that's not the case. Yet. <laughs> Until this guy respawns. Go with a little defense, and then back to healing. Anyway, so we'll see what happens, but, um, yeah, I feel like the SM7B, you know, it's like that X that's bad for you that I just can't quit, and I keep making bad decisions <laughs> in relation to it. So if I just cut it out and I just stop worrying about, like, you know, why can't I get this mic to sound right, and or maybe I actually don't. This is going to be ugly. I don't know if I got that off. Um, you know, if I just don't worry about... You know, maybe it doesn't actually sound all that great for a lot of streamers. But I will say, I was watching, yeah, one of Potato Jet's videos where he brings in his audio guy, his friend that does audio. And um, they were talking about, like, how to EQ stuff in audio in Adobe Premiere, which is something I'm not unfamiliar with because that's my main software for work. But I know this guy is like a full-blown professional Hollywood audio guy, so I wanted to see like what he would what he would do with Premiere, just so I could, you know, learn something. 
And the whole video was recorded with SM7Bs, and I was like, those sound like how I would want it to sound. And granted, you know, the secret sauce is they have a, you know, a Hollywood sound engineer. You know, probably helped with the, uh, with the EQ. So, but it had like a clarity, a smoothness. It was exactly what I always thought the SM7B could achieve in good hands. But what I've learned is that I'm not those good hands. That's the long and the short of it. And that's okay. Um, you know, I don't want some super bassy, radio broadcasty style. I just wanted easy to listen to and natural. And I feel like I can get the easy to listen to, but I just never quite cracked the natural. Uh, there we go. And again, it's all subjective, right? Like people might hear other stuff when I'm on like clearly on an Austrian audio mic and they're like, that sounds like shit. Um, but the dirty secret is my voice probably sounds like shit. Uh, so. Okay, so I was tempted to run in there and get that guy, but they're going to respawn. And my fear is that when I bring one of those guys back, these, well, you know what, I'll take a chance. It's going to be what happened last time where the other two respawn. No, that guy, why can't? Now it says it's better to bring them near the hot springs. I... Do they get less powerful attacks? I, I can't tell if it's any different. Oop, probably should have interrupted that. I was focusing on the defense, but uh, probably should have took care of that first. Anyway. I know this is all stupid because for most people it shouldn't it just like pick one and go with it like you know people who are smarter than me like Matt who's got his road NT1 there we go that's what I was worried about um, but I find this like I said I find this stuff interesting because it's you know part of what I studied and film production is part of my job in a way and Again, what I went to school for. So I find this stuff interesting, and I want to learn about it. I want to keep learning and figuring things out. Uh, but I think it might be time to cut bait. Oh, it didn't... Uh... Which actually also means I might... Um... Cut bait with the Earthworks Ethos because it's a similar style microphone but a condenser. Uh, and I'm good. Like, I find other things interesting right now, like um, small dynamic, uh, small diaphragm mics. Um, for their ability to be usable, oh, I think I got that one off, in, you know, with my craziness, keeping my desk uncluttered, you know, the footprint, the, you know, different things. Uh, you know, just seeing, like, what happens if I get rid of my low-profile mic arm and switch to a uh, desk stand, you know bring up tons of desk space, you know, what is that like? You know, just things I'm interested in trying. Get out of that stun. This is the last one. This was tricky, I gotta say. This was really tricky. Uh, I don't think I was ever completely on the brink of death, but I feel like I was a little bit closer than um, 
I realized at times. Let's grab some of this. Uh, we're going back to her. Nice. Okay. Anyway, so that's uh, <laughs> the update nobody asked for. But I do genuinely, I mean, obviously, because I drone on and on about it for hours. I do genuinely enjoy production. I don't love the times I was on like a real set uh, for some commercials. I didn't necessarily love it. But again, I was also like a production assistant, which is like the lowest of low on the totem pole. So obviously that's not going to be the most fun thing in the world. But it made me realize, and I may have said this already, um, I like being on set when I when I'm directing, when I'm calling the shots, when I have something interesting decisions to make. I just interesting decisions, really. Like I've enjoyed like being a the DP, the director of photography on like student films, the few times I did it, but um, I'm not good at it. And so it comes back to interesting decisions, but it's the decisions are more technical and I, I enjoy the storytelling decisions. I like, you know, I like writing. I like that, you know, I like that kind of thing. So when I was directing, the decisions were more storytelling based. So, so I dug that and it's hard because, you know, it's like, why don't they just let me be in charge on my first day, <laughs> so to speak. But like, I, and, uh, but I don't want to, the effort isn't worth it to me to be on set unless I'm getting to make storytelling decisions. And so even then it's like working on a commercial I realize, like, I don't give a shit about making commercials in that sense. Uh, the Spirit of the Gaunt King is an unexpected meeting. Greetings, Only a man of great valor would dare to face such mighty and terrible creatures. You have proved your prowess. One more. Uh, ooh, your task was futile, for a mortal cannot eternally banish a spirit, but your courage, okay, in the face of horror speaks well of you. Okay. Greetings, okay, you've earned the right to hear this tale, which has been kept from my kindred, uh, by my kindred, and is known only to them and to very few among the learned wise. When the great sea monster came to take the Lyahara away, my people begged him not to mount upon it, for the witch king could send terrible storms to drown them all, but he would not listen. Surely, as the monster moved out into the great water, a most violent storm came from the north and caused the monster to be dashed upon the ice and slain. For many days the storm raged, and all who were caught outside of the village perished in the deep snow and blinding ice rain that poured from the sky. When it finally ended, we went in search of survivors both of the uh, Lumivaki and of those who had gone out upon the sea monster, but there were none. In the following year, another sea monster appeared like unto the first, but it was slain ere it neared the land, and the Vanavaki who rode upon it fled its ruin. Though we found many bodies frozen in the ice, the trail was lost at the mouth of the cave, sealed by ice. I do not think we should waste the day. Uh, the cave lies within uh, Talvimuri. It is a dangerous place, but I do not think you should fear to go there. I myself, I myself will guide you there when you are ready. Uh, the elf does not live. You will likely not find any remains beyond his clothing. If you bore this ring, you seek. It should be among his belongings if they remain. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I actually want to decline this really quickly. And um, repair, check equipment, stuff like that. All right, so yeah, let's, um, let's head down and uh, check all this. Because I think it's not that... Far, right? I'm hoping. It's like just around this corner. Uh, maybe not. Where am I? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's okay.
I mean, again, I, I know I keep harping, but I just I feel like the graphics game, the graphics of this game still hold up. Uh, I know it's gone through some revisions since it first released, but um, yeah. Can I just cut through? Yeah, here we go. All right, let's um just really quickly. Do you wish to look at my wares? Repair. Make sure we're good. Sell. Why not? I, again, you know what? Actually, I let me see something really quickly. I thought I heard, and I couldn't tell you where I heard this, that it actually got easier to hand in. Maybe not. Okay. I was going to say, I thought I, I heard it was a little easier to hand in to trade. reputation items, but um, I might have misheard. Yeah, we're just going to dump this stuff and um, just clean up a little bit before we keep going with the book quests. Torn Journal. First Age Relic. Yeah. I feel like on previous characters I was a little better about reputation stuff. This is heavy, so I can ditch it. It's not a problem with my level. See, like, now this one probably could help me out here. Uh, completed quest. Maybe it's because I haven't completed the quest of the Raven. Maybe if I had completed the quest of the Raven, it might be easier to... I, I would see what I was thinking that I heard about handing in... Uh, Uh, reputation items. Okay, let's see. So now this is something that's sought after by Warden, so I'm wondering if this is like a... I'm gonna hold on to that. Because maybe that's gonna be useful for like an, a craftable item useful specifically to... I guess I locked that. What's this? Uh, 76 armor... So it's level 50. I'm not that far, but uh, let's. I guess let's hold on to that for now. And that's heavy, so we're good. Okay. Now that we've done that, it probably wasn't 100% necessary, but... Helps my OCD or whatever. Um, let's go back to... I can't even remember her name. Uh, like, so yeah, here, did I just screw up a bunch of these quests that I have off to the side? I'm sure that I had some of this stuff and I just sold it, but oh well. Also, let's, uh, you know what? I don't know what these fall under. Yeah, let's just get rid of these. I don't actually need to see them. Let's bring that back. Nope, not that one. Uh, hmm. So yeah, uh, let's go see. Uh, caves in... T okay, sure, she's gonna guide us. Perfect. You are a stranger to the Lumi Vakey. Iriana revealed the location of a cave where Aariel, the captain of the elfship Thorval, had long ago taken refuge. The Losoth seer, Saia, guides the heroes from the south in search of Narquil. Okay, Saia. I don't know how close I was on her pronunciation, but, uh... Greetings, We must hurry if we are to find your ring, Black Lodge. We must hurry if we are to retrieve the ring before more Drambor. All right. Am I going the right way? Yes. <laughs> 
Now it's interesting, for once, the NPC that I'm walking with isn't like jacked up to 27,000. More Drambor is near at hand than we thought. Hit point, so I may need to be careful about that. Master. Oh, here we go. Now, can I go this way, or do I actually have to go melt the other... Yeah. Seems this way has been blocked to hinder us. We must hurry up to find your ring. You have done it. Let's continue, then. Got my. You can see my combo over there is all messed up, so. Alright. Saiya's so taken off without me. Always good. We're on an escort mission. Stack a couple of bleeds. That should do it. Getting a little bit of lag all of a sudden. Maybe not so bad, but... Uh It's interesting, the boar's rush really seems to be, like the guy in the in the back, it really seems to mess up. It seems to maybe do less on the front. Yeah, I I don't know if I screwed up that gambit, but I felt like I hit the key to send it and it just didn't register, but maybe that was on me. This is tiring business. Wait one moment while I catch my breath. Okay, so she's going to restore her morale. Then we're going to head up here. I feel like let them fight Gif, we should just... Why are we getting involved here? Oh no, they killed the snow. Okay. be a little bit better about managing because she actually got pretty hurt there. I mean, she was in the 4,000, so she lost like a 1,000 morale, but I 
sort of taking it for granted that she'd be fine. And I probably should not do that. Uh, hmm. Here we go. So, another one of these, so we need a torch. Soon I will tire of thee, and thy quest will end. All those who place hope in thee will suffer until their bitter end. More Drambor. So I'm wondering if that torch over there is usable. Nope. Okay. We must hurry quickly this way. I'm <laughs> okay. So while I'm looking for the torch, the answer is being literally thrown at me. He must be powerful indeed if he can freeze and thaw this at will. Some new strength drives him. These old bones do not move like they used to. Screw that up, okay. Let's try some Boar's Rush. Okay, stack some bleeds. Maybe just go for some Wall of Steel DPS. I assume that's what that does. I have no idea. Again, I don't know how to play a Warden. You may not have figured that out by now, but... I was wondering if light damage... Is that, that's why I threw that last Gambit on. I was just curious if these guys being Angmarim would be more affected by light damage. Are they evil? It's something else. Now, these creatures are certainly designed to look menacing and evil, but I like the idea that... And it's something I've said a million times, you know, part of what I like about the, the magic, so to speak, of Middle-earth is that it's it's nature, it's the world is sort of the source of the magic, if that makes any sense, and it's like history, text, you know, things like that. And um, here you have the Angmar trying to... do whatever it is they're trying to do and here nature is just like no no we're gonna push back it's still a force to be reckoned with black lodge listen even she thinks i talk too much Okay, so I know we could go back the other way. Let's just go check that out real quick.
Okay, maybe not. Maybe this is just a shortcut back if we need it for any reason. Although usually you don't. Usually, you know, at the end of a mission, you just get, uh, let's see, he must be powerful indeed if he can freeze and thaw this at will. So somewhere we need a torch, I'm assuming, but. And maybe once again, I uh, just should have waited. Search the area for a way through. Um, I'm right in front of it. It's, it's right behind you. <laughs> so, as you can see, uh, they are not trying to make this actually like a puzzle to solve. <laughs> they are giving you the answer. They're having the NPC stand right in front of where you're supposed to go next. And I'm just trying to make too much out of it. Trying to attribute more gameplay to the game than is actually what it's trying to do. Interesting, okay. Okay, so again, Sai is really... I'm a little nervous that deflection stuff I was doing wasn't actually attracting aggro. It was actually dishing it onto Sai, and that's why the arrows were blue instead of red. I am tired. This fight is not mine. Go and defeat more Drambor. Maybe we can find out more about this new master of his. You know what? That's fair. <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> Ah, I was wondering if that would make it this far. That was quite a talent for avoiding death. Ah, that's <laughs> if you watch this back, I don't know if that's true. If thou dost insist on hindering my progress, then I will deal with thee now. If thou would give me aid, uh, but aid uh if thou would but aid me, thou would uh my new master knows how to honor those who aid him. Nay, then thou will not leave this place. Sorry, I had to. I was about to cough, so I muted for a second, then it. Alright, stack some bleeds. Oh, he's back to full health. Interesting. Okay. I don't know if that first bleed was the four or the... Okay, we got three going. Let's try some uh, light...
Angmar has power over these terrible things more terrible than their darkest nightmares. Feels like light damage stacking would over time would do more than Oh, they're gonna let him go. I tire of this. Come, join with me, Black Lodge. Those who stand against Mordrambor, the champion of Angmar and servant of the Great Eye will surely fall. I almost just kicked your ass, bro. Ah, uh, the hag has thou hast come to die as well. Oh. Die? Nay, I think not. Thou hast revealed much. Treacherous tongue should not wag so freely. Uh oh. Plot twist? Treacherous. Lot twist, bitches. Amar Thiel. Didst thou believe I would be so foolish as to let thee go unwatched, Forakel? Oh, to Forakel? Mistress, I. Thou wilt pay for thine insolence. Okay, now it's the let them fight gif. This is not over. Yeah, something tells me I probably... Nope. An ancient chest used by the elves for holding valuables instanced the path of the Ariel. Right, because the ring was going to be in his remains, not. Found a fragment of Naquil. So now usually... There we go, I was about to say, they usually give you a way out. They just bring me back to the cave, even though. So, uh, you are mighty to face such creatures. No, 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 we can't. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're just going to pretend that never happened. Interesting. Okay, I, I do wish, since this is an instance area, that they could have updated it a little bit. Uh, let's see, talk to Arvidwi. Is that person... Right, the ghost, okay. Again, I could spend the mithril coin and just get there, but I say it over and over. I really like this area. I really like... Again, you know, it's just... It's the head cannon, right? You know, you're riding across the countryside. You're sort of filling in a lot of the gaps for your heroic quest.
And uh, yeah, sometimes I want to just bask in that a little bit. Other times I'm like, let's pop the coin. for Rune Keeper, I guess. Okay, good. The lag feels like it's calmed down a little bit. The elf captain perished then. I will not grieve, for he escaped this Middle Earth to a land much greener, or so the elves say. <laughs> That's one way to, I guess, alleviate. I guess alleviate your guilt. I think this guy is kind of the reason why everybody's dead in a way. But uh, the ring fragment should be brought to Elrond of Rivendell, for he is a wise in the matters of the enemy. A ring of power, however minor, is a dangerous thing. Give Master Elrond my gratitude, for it was in his care that my progeny were raised. If any of my line remains, speak well of me to them and bring them hope of great deeds to come. All right. Chapter 10, A Triumphant Return. I'm wondering... Let's see if I can get up to the uh, stable. Seems like everything's respawned, so let's see how this goes. <laughs> I, I like that animation when you come off your horse like that. It's got the right feel to it, the way like the sound of the leg break sounds right. That looks right when you come tumbling off your, your mount. I thought Elden Ring did an interesting thing where if you, I know I've said this before, I was really skeptical about Elden Ring handling mounts because I'm like, oh, they've never done that before in a Souls game. I'm scared of change. But, um, and they did a great job. And one of the things is if you like lose your mount in a fight due to damage, you have to spend like a, a health resource to get it back. And I thought that was a nice touch. You could wait, but if you wanted it to happen immediately, You've got to, uh, got to pay the toll. Are you well today? Okay, so because of I, I'm lacking the reputation, I don't have the ability to fast travel, so I'll pay the mythical coin for this. Uh, was that a fast travel or was that a... To get back to the main city and uh, see where this can go. I believe there's a book 14, so I don't think we're quite done with volume one yet. 
let's uh, head over here to the stable master, see where we can get to. You are a stranger to the Looney Turkey. We can get to Bree. We can get to the. Oh, we can get to Rivendell. We're not done in uh, Forakel. Maybe 14 takes us back there. I'm not really sure. I was just curious. I popped. The, I just popped the uh, frame rate counter. You can see it below my gambit default. I'm always curious with this title, just because of this, the hiccups, the stutters. I play this game solo, obviously, you've been watching me do that, but I, I really love when I see other players about. Because uh, again, headcanon and stuff, I just imagine them doing as I'm doing, taking in every bit of the lore, the setting. Or they're just grinding dailies, you know, what do I know? But. But I do often wonder how many players out there, you know, are just checking boxes because they've done it all before, or that's just how they approach MMOs, or if they're really soaking it in, as I'm trying to. And how many other MMOs really give you the incentive to soak it in the way this setting does. All right, book 13, chapter 10. Dark days are coming. You've returned from Furacal and with the fragment of Narquil. And what is this, you say? The shade of Arvidui remained there? A foul end to a good man. May the Valar have mercy upon his spirit. His greetings are welcomed, but they will be welcomed more by his heir, I think. Go to Aragorn and tell him of your meeting with Arvidui. Arvid Arvidui. Unlike many men, I think you will find that he does not fear the dead or word of them. He's in one of the guest rooms along the road that winds up the southern slope of the Vale of Imladris. Okay. I can actually see this being like a nice coda to book 13. And then have Aragorn like kick off book 14, whatever it might be. Maybe he knows of other parts of Narquil. Maybe his knowledge of Arvidui the lore, whatever, might push you in the new direction. But I can see that being a, like a good good way to close out 13 and go into 14. And I say that honestly having no specific recollection of what's about to happen. Like again, I can remember, I've, I've done these book quests before. Uh, but it was a long time ago, and uh, <laughs> beet juice, baby, my memory is not what it used to be. So I have like passing images in my head. Like I knew that we would talk to the woman in the cave and in uh, Firekel, but I forgot that she was like a person in disguise. I remembered Sarah Oakhart was someone in disguise. 
but yeah, the real, just real vague impressions and weak broad strokes. I do remember at some point, and we'll get to it, like I think it's the, maybe the way the next volume starts I really enjoyed. You've delivered the news to Gandalf, but there is still more to be done. Greetings. Alas, such uh, alas, such a weight King Arvadui must bear. Thank you for your tidings, my friend. When there is more time, we will speak at more length of your meeting. Greetings. Chapter 11. I thank you again for bringing word of your meeting with the shade of Arvadui. I hope that his spirit will find rest from its exile. In the meantime, Lairdin has been awaiting news of your efforts. You should go to him and tell him of your adventures. He's in the chambers of the first floor of the last homely house. Go with the goodwill of all the free peoples. Okay, let's see what we're going to get. We're going to get a... Um... Bu -bu 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 -bum. Can we use these? Yeah, okay, so we're finally going to get a bump in... Our weapon. We're going to take the blade, I guess. Oh no, we're gonna we're gonna get this when we get there. So what I was curious is like at some point we're gonna get like a legendary weapon or something. And I thought they were blue, like those weapons were. But I remember them not having names. Like it was just like not maybe it wasn't quite as bad as legendary sword, legendary club. But I'm wondering if I'm wondering if um They took the time to, because I, I have a feeling like, I, I know players, like at least the hardcore, were never in love with the legendary weapon system. So I'm wondering if part of, uh, as part of the, the, if they revamped it in any way, was part of that revamp to give the more specific names so it feels a little more lore appropriate. One of the nice things about uh, the One Ring second edition from Freely Games, and maybe this was in the first edition as well, but I'm not familiar with it is that they have like a really nice set of tools for GMs to create like legendary items like that. Like some tables to give you a little backstory, a little bit of its power, is it cursed? Um, really, it's, it's, it's a little more involved to do it on the fly, I think. Like in mid-adventure, I believe, but in a VTT, you could just sort of assign those random tables to a shortcut and boom, it could spit something out all at once. You could just sort of have a chain through the tables, but um, I don't know. Oh, yeah, so he's a bit of an evil presence because he's motivated by saving his daughter. At last, the final fragment of Narquil has been found. I must prepare now to take the ring south. The plans are nearly complete, so that's not good. I was perhaps wrong to wish Narquil reforged. I see now how dangerous this thing may be. It must be destroyed, and I believe there is but one place where this must be done. May be done. It is not far, but I deem it will be dangerous. Foes will assail us from every side, but we must succeed. Neither Amarthiel nor Mordrambor must recover it. Farewell for now, Black Lodge. So I can also take the spear. I like the idea of the spear because that's actually the weapon you're supposed to, not supposed to, but that's sort of the warden's deal. Like it's got the special shield with the curved out section so your spear can go over it. So I might just for, for whatever, I might just take that to make it sort of lore-ish appropriate. Now if I could just find it in this hot mess. Uh, it's going to be one of the ones that are sparkling, but... That doesn't always necessarily help you narrow it down. Is it that? Nice. Stay a moment. Book 14. Greetings, Black Lodge. You've been of great help to me in the past, and now I have need of your aid once more. As you know, we will soon depart for Eregion, but there is much to be done before I leave. First, I would ask you to visit, uh, visit File... Phalegnaneth, 
in the Hall of Fire here in Rivendell and request provisions of her. Then I want to have you journey to the Isle of Tinadir in Evendim and ask that uh, Nak Collip to send my trusted steed, Arel, back to me. Lastly, I would ask you to venture to Gath Forthnir and ask Goladir to return my breastplate to me. It has long been missing. When you've accomplished these tasks, return to me and we will depart. You know what I'm going to do? Uh, let's see. It's a little bit of a shorter session, but why don't we do this? We'll call this the end of this. We've done book 13. We'll pick this up next time, starting with book 14. Maybe we can get through book 14 in the next session. Uh, but this was great. Uh, maybe we're not going back to Fort Kel for a little while. Who knows? Uh, region is what I think starts to take you to... Well, I think it eventually takes you to uh, Moria. But maybe there's other things going on before then. Um, because a region was not in the original release of the game, so book maybe book 14 was not part of the original game. I, I honestly can't remember. Um, maybe it stopped at book 11, 12, I, I really don't know. Well, regardless, thanks again for checking this out. This has been Black Lodge Trivia Night. Uh, I'm Art running through the uh, book quests in Lord of the Rings Online. Uh, hopefully this has been fun. Like I said, we just finished off book 13, volume one. We're going to dive into 14 next time. Uh, but even though this is what we're doing, mainly <laughs> it's hard to believe given what's been coming up on the channel and the Twitch stream, we are a tabletop RPG podcast. If you prefer audio versions of those actual plays or some of our discussions, just search for Black Lodge Trivia Night wherever you get your audio and uh, we should show up. Like, subscribe, leave positive reviews if you'd like. We always appreciate that. Uh, if you have been watching this, you've already found our YouTube channel, so like and subscribe here as well if you want. On Twitch, you know, we're there as well. Sometimes I live stream the Lord of the Rings Online or whatever else I'm playing. Matt's been doing a lot of Bloodborne and other Souls games. Uh, what else? We've got a... We just recently started a new sort of podcast about Souls called Fire uh, Bonfire Walk With Me. Uh, Matt and I have been talking about a few other things. We've got actual plays coming up, uh, another session of English Eerie, Patrick's running Eat the Reich, we've got our Cold War spy game still in the mix, Matt is prepping Delta Green, there's just a lot going on. So, you know, hopefully, you know, you swing by, subscribe, check in, pick the things up that are interesting, and uh, hopefully you enjoy them. Come check us out in the Discord if you want, the Discord link should be in the description. Uh, but regardless, even if you ignore all of that, you know, we appreciate that you check this out. So uh, take care and thanks again. Bye bye. <laughs>